Will you die with me? Always the underdog, compared to the likes of Silent Hill and Resident Evil, Project Zero has maintained a cult following for its great concept and mystique, despite never selling as well as its contemporaries. With cues from paranormal Japanese horror like Ringu, the series would continue to thrive in 2015 with Maiden of the Black Water. At a time when its competitors had seen better days, this Project Zero, despite some lack of polish and an uneven localization, would stick to what it knew best and deliver a traditional, slow burn survival horror that greatly benefits from the Wii U's unique capabilities, making for a solid time for genre aficionados. Upon initial inspection, players may be quick to dismiss this Project Zero. Especially to those weaned on modern control styles, movement can feel unwieldy, as it lands somewhere between the awkward tank controls yeah. of classic survival horror and the closer perspective of Resident Evil 4. This can cause the camera to become trapped on environmental objects. There is also a heavy dose of backtracking through the same areas, albeit with different characters, and consequently, the pacing can come off as glacial at times, with minutes of dead space as you walk around without encountering a ghost. And this is blanketed by an awkwardly stiff story, with lots of stiff dialogue and weird interactions between characters. As a result, it's a game which burns slow and forces you to stick with it to reap its rewards. Mount Hikami. Mount Hikami. But Maiden deserves praise for maintaining a constant sense of unease. This is beautifully achieved for its locale, Hikami Mountain, which is steeped in dark lighting, dripping with disturbing imagery, and filled with tight corners. After defeating certain spirits, you can uncover their final moments in an optional interaction, which can lead to truly dark moments and gruesome imagery. Even picking up an item is tainted with tension, as you can often be grabbed by ghosts and take damage, making picking up items unnerving to say the least, and the ghosts themselves, screeching and moving without thought, bore designs which range from unsettling to downright macabre. While there are no iconic moments like, say, the zombie dog smashing through a window in Resident Evil, the constant sense of dread and deeply dark atmosphere will appeal to horror fans. Koei Tecmo also utilised the Wii U to great success. The series has always utilised camera-based offence to fend off ghosts, and this nicely ties to the Wii U's gamepad. When approached, you can hold your gamepad to the screen, almost like a virtual camera, which allows you to physically adjust your sight. It's intuitive and greatly immerses you into the game as you fluster to adjust your camera sight while contending with multiple targets. While gamers can opt to use a more traditional control scheme which uses the analog sticks, it feels really natural to play using the Wii U's motion control. Maiden of the Black Water feels at home on the Wii U, taking advantage of the system's unique quirks and enhancing the gameplay as a result. Combat also comes with several elements. You can take the role of three characters, two of whom use the same camera obscura while the third uses his own. Between all three, points earned through gameplay can be used to upgrade your offense. Special lenses, such as ones which increase the stun length, deal more damage and recover health can also be found. It can make you overpowered and, perhaps, for horror purists, this is the main complaint you can levy. With plentiful health items and infinite ammo for the weakest film type, the game can feel a tad easy on normal difficulty, as you may finish the 15 or so hour game with few deaths to your name. The tension is still present, but by perhaps including more resources, some of the immediate stress is reduced. But after completion, there's still plenty to keep you busy. 
Lengthy chapters can take close to an hour to complete, and once you finish the first playthrough, Nightmare Mode is unlocked, which is definitely more pleasing for old school survival horror fans. The game boasts 8 endings, and though you can earn these by simply replaying the last chapter, Extra costumes, which run the gambit of comical clothing to Nintendo cameos, will please those looking to get more for their buck. And there's even extra chapters post-game, which put you in the shoes of Ninja Gaiden character Ayane, changing up the mechanics slightly while offering one of the stranger cameos in gaming. The only shame is the lack of polish in spots. The game's engine is definitely capable, drenching the game with dark lighting. Kudos should also be given to the intricate map, which leaves you unsettled, characters look detailed, and the engine keeps up with the on-screen action. But janky animation, particularly the awful running movement, and other bugs can spoil the presentation. The localization is also uneven, with some poor English dubbing, which leaves cutscenes looking unimpressive at points. But the ambient, quiet music, and chilling ghost cries do make up for it, living up to the Project Zero name, despite some rough edges. Though uneven at points, horror fans will appreciate Project Zero, Maiden of the Black Water, and its adherence to both its own tropes and survival horror as a whole. It benefits greatly from the system, with the gamepad feeling like a comfortable fit for the camera obscura, while the glacial pacing and lack of polish will turn off those not keen on the genre, both fans of the franchise and horror buffs would do well to check this one out, as it serves as an understated success on Nintendo's underrated console. You've seen too much. You cannot leave the mountain. You will dissolve into nothing. <laughs>